What's going on, everybody? I uh, apologize for not getting this video up sooner. I actually did the video once on campus, had a bunch of problems with the audio and the video, and so I get to uh, come home and do it again from my home. So, hope everybody got home safe. Sorry that we had our first night canceled. Not ideal, but what I want to do is just get everybody acclimated up to date with what's going on with the class, what to expect, where to find things, and I usually just take a good part of the first night and get all that done. So, um, you're going to have to send me an email if you have any questions. Hopefully, I can make everything pretty straightforward, but uh, make sure to let me know if you have any questions before I'm done here. Now, you can find my contact information online in my Neo show, but let me get all the way down to the bottom and uh, go ahead and just give it to you now. So, there's my, so my name is Eric Rao, by the way. Um, Rao is in cow as, as opposed to row, so we, it's pronounced Eric Rao. And the email and my office phone number there are in the top left. And then my office hours, which I'll come back to, are on the right there. So feel free to give me a call or email me if you have any questions by the time I'm done here. Okay, so um, what you all are enrolled in is a hybrid class. And I know a lot of people are not often familiar with what that is. So I want to start out with what is a hybrid class and then how do I do the hybrid class for microbiology. So a hybrid is sort of a blend of the traditional face-to-face -face and the strictly online classes. So it's, it's, it's right down the middle. By definition, it's supposed to be half online, half face-to-face. -face. But the truth is what 50% what actually means when, it gets, when you get down to it is sort of uh, up to the instructor uh, exactly how they um, break that up. But the, uh, the idea is that in a, um, the, the spirit of it is half online, half face-to-face. So the way I do it is we'll do the learning online, and when we come to class, we'll do review followed by the quiz. We'll have a weekly quiz, and then whenever we get to an exam, we'll do the, the exam in class as well. So you'll do some online assignments, but the testing and the quizzing and that sort of thing will be done in class along with review as well. So this really follows what a lot of people call a flipped learning approach. You learn online. And then when you come to class, you're really more discussing and reviewing as opposed to learning it like you would in a normal class. There'll be some exceptions here and there, but for the most part, that's how we'll do it. So the way I've done the presentations is I've done them like I'm doing now on my computer, where I record my screen and I'm talking into it. And I really do the exact same lectures that I would do in class, but I just do them on my computer up when I upload those videos to YouTube. So the advantages here is it's really the exact same class that you would take face to face, but you get the ability to pause, rewind. Um, you can go back and listen to it multiple times. Obviously, you can listen to it anytime you want to. So those are some of the advantages there. So the online videos have documents that go with them that I call the student lecture guides and study guides. I'll come back to these here when I get to the the document section, but you've got physical copies that you get through the bookstore in what's called the course pack, and then I've also got digital copies available online in the resources section, which I'll show you here. So if you've already picked them up in the bookstore, a lot of people have on the first day, you've got the student lecture guides and the study guides in the course pack. If you're in lab, there's a separate lab course pack. I'm going to do another video on lab here, and you can go check that out when you're done here. So that's the idea. It's structured where you learn online, you got some resources to help you, we come to class, and we do our, our assessments, our tests, and our quizzes, and things like that. So each week in it, we will cover a different chapter, starting with chapter one. And starting from tonight until next week, you'll have time to cover chapter one. We'll jump around, we'll go to chapter four next. I'll look, have you look at the schedule here before we're done. But each week we cover one chapter, and that's what you'll be doing online. You'll be doing the videos, you'll be using your resources, you'll be learning. And when we come in the following week, like next week, you'll then have a quiz over that chapter. So next week we'll quiz over chapter one. Now the quiz will be held at the end of class, and through from the beginning to the end, we will have review. So that's what we'll do. I kind of skipped over that, but on the last section here. 
it talks about we do I do question and answer. It just basically means if you have questions, I will answer them. And I just I just always do that first. Any questions that you have up front. Um, cell phone review. We'll do some questions that I use an app to that you can use your cell phone and you can answer along with your cell phone. And that uh, that's a different type of review. And then I do group discussion to get you guys to talk amongst yourself and, and discuss your answers there. So we do quite a bit of review. Uh, now you need to be prepared coming into it, but the review is to refresh your memory, give you a chance to talk about it, and give you a chance to go over it uh, before you take the quiz. So each week at the end of class, you'll have that quiz. The quizzes, what you should expect is about 15 questions, give or take. Most of them are multiple choice. You're talking 70-ish percent multiple choice. You do have a couple of fill in the blank on each quiz, and then you'll typically have some short answer on each quiz. But the majority of them will come off multiple choice. Multiple choice can vary from mod, you know, easy to moderate to hard. And then the fill in the blank and the short answer are more of just do you know it or do you not know it? You know, you can't really guess. You can't really, um, you know, pick the do elimination or anything like that. Obviously. So when it comes to getting a grade in the in the class, the way I try and structure it is getting a C is doable where you get most of the multiple choice but maybe the fill in the blank and the short answer you have a harder time with those because you're not as prepared but you're coming to class each week you're doing the online material and you know the fact is getting a C is something that can be done without having to get every short answer question without having to get every fill in the blank but really to get a B and an A you're gonna have to be much more consistent getting the fill in the blank questions right getting the short answer questions right and that's going to take more study you have to be more prepared week to week so when it comes to those weekly quizzes you, you do see the majority of points from multiple choice but when it comes to the difference between a C, B, and an A a lot of that difference comes in are you getting the multiple choice or excuse me the fill in the blank and the short answer questions so that sort of differentiates the C's, the B's, and the A's we'll have three quizzes and then the next session we'll have an exam starting starting with next week with our first with our first quiz and the exams will cover four chapters of content so i'll pull up the schedule here in a second to show you what that's going to look like but we'll essentially do three chapters with each having a quiz and then on the fourth chapter that next week we come in you'll have an exam over the combination of those four chapters and the exams will be a little different than the quizzes they're going to be mostly multiple choice so you'll have less less points from anything else but 70 to 80 questions typically about 20 per chapter and they're going to make up the multiple choice are going to make up about 93 to 94 percent of that grade about a six to seven percent of the exam will come from the other part here which is called the essay portion well, essay is really just a series of writing questions that are all sort of done in one big answer format so you sort of put all these questions together to make your response so the essay is another one where to really get you know to really get an a on the essay you're going to really have to be able to um, to write intelligently about the topic and get that essay portion correct all right so let's take a look at the schedule for exam dates and then i'll show you kind of how this how this uh, follows throughout the semester So I'm back here on the home page. If you go to syllabus over here on the left, scroll down, you'll see schedule. And we can pull up our schedule for the semester. So the topics are, are put there in, in the week that we're doing them. So week one, we're doing chapter one. That means from this point to the next week, we're working on chapter one. When we come in next week, we'll have that quiz over chapter one. The week after that, you'll be working on chapter four. The week after that, you'll be doing chapter five. And we'll have a quiz over each of these three chapters here. Chapter one quiz, chapter four quiz, chapter five quiz. Now, when it comes to chapter six, we won't have a separate quiz for that. And instead, what we'll do is when we come in on the 19th, you'll have an exam over all four chapters. And chapter six will just be the fourth component of that exam. Okay, so you won't have a separate quiz for chapter six. It'll just be the fourth part of that exam. So hopefully that makes sense. You've got a chapter one quiz, chapter four quiz, chapter five quiz. 
chapter 6, you'll still do the same way. You'll review for it the same way online. But when you come in that next week, you're taking an exam over the four chapters, and chapter 6 is the last part of that exam. All right? Starting the next week, then, we'll start over with the next section, and we'll go until our next exam, and that same process will repeat. So these are what I call the unit exams. They have four chapters. We go, we have three of those all the way till the second to last week of class. The next week we then have a final exam, which I'll talk about. So I don't go in, in exact chronolo chronological order with the chapters. So you can see on this schedule what chapters we're doing on what days. Now the final exam is your fourth exam. It's comprehensive means it covers all the all the material throughout the semester that's the bad news on the last day of class the, it's 100 questions the good news about it is that it's not as hard as it sounds I give you a study guide I'll show you where that's at and the study guide is very thorough and the question difficulty on this exam is not as hard as other exams so the degree of question difficulty I would say is easy to moderate and you don't have any essay you don't have any writing you don't have any short answers so the final exam while it is comprehensive, it is um, very concise, uh, concisely summarized in the study guide, meaning what's on the study guide is what's on the test, and it is uh, of easy to moderate degree of questions. doesn't mean you don't study, it's just to give you some perspective. It's not something that is going to kill your grade last second, typically, as long as you're prepared, obviously. And I'll come back to resources and show you where to find the study guides for that. Um, putting it all together then this is what your grade is going to look like or how it's made up you've got the exams and the final exam making up over half your grade so those three unit exams account for 40 percent the final 15 each of those quizzes add up to 25 percent as it says over here you can drop your low quiz score so you get to erase one grade so that means mostly you can just drop whatever low score you got if something comes up you can just not take a quiz take a zero and drop it that sometimes works for people depending on the circumstance the other things that we'll be grading on I'll talk about next are you've got online assignments and you've got participation so those make up the other 20 percent of your grade so exams final quizzes make up 80 percent online assignments and participation make up the other 20 percent so expected week to week you're, you, I'm going to show you where to find the resources to study for your quizzes and your exams. Each week you'll have one chapter, as I mentioned. So to prepare for that, we want to go to the resources section of my Neo Show. You've also got a lot of this stuff in your course pack that you got from the bookstore. Uh, but in the resources, we'll see digital copies of everything that you've got in the course pack, as well as new material like the online videos. And uh, I've also got the PowerPoints that I use. So let's go take a look at that, and then I'll come back and talk about the coursework here. All right, so from the home page, if we scroll down on the left and we check out resources, we will find the documents labeled by chapter for the most part. They, they sometimes can get a little bit out of order, but if you look, they're pretty well labeled. So we've got lecture documents on the left-hand side. On the right hand side we've got the links to the online YouTube videos the lecture online lectures let's take a look at those first so the first thing you want to start out is by watching the videos click chapter one part one Hi. and it's going to take you to Hi. my first video here okay over here on the left side you've got my you've got the student lecture guides the study guides and you've also got copies of the PowerPoints over here as well. So as I mentioned, you've got a lot of these documents in your course pack. So the student lecture guides, for example. What these are is they're in an outline for you to follow while you're watching the video. So as you watch that video, and they, you know, each one correlates with the, the, the chapter, you'll see that these sections need to be filled in and you've got questions that you'll answer that throughout so each segment's a little different but for the most part it should be pretty obvious you need to fill things in answer questions and essentially com complete this so that it all 
makes sense, okay? So as you go through the video, that's what you're doing there. Now, the the videos are what have the full context, and that's what's meant to be done that's like sitting in a classroom with me, hearing me talk about it like I would. You do have access also to the PowerPoints that I use to do the presentations. Same information. And, you know, you can go through it faster, but you're not going to get the full context here. These are the, these are here to let you really go back and look at things. And, and so you don't rather than have to pull up the video and scroll through it and pause it and scroll back and forth. Once you've watched the video, once you've got the context, if you just need to review or you want to pull up an image, then you can come to the PowerPoint here and look at it. Look at it this way. They're in a PDF format. If you ever need the actual PowerPoint format for some reason, you can just email me and I can send you that. But I have by default just the PDF versions of those. So lecture guides, study guides, PowerPoints over here on the right, you got the video links. As you'll, every chapter is a little different. Most chapters are divided into to multiple segments, not all of them, but more, most of them are. Um, and so for whatever chapter we're covering, chapter one, whenever I say chapter one, that means whatever, however many parts are involved in chapter one. So chapter one's got, or any chapter rather, not just chapter one, for any chapter, however many parts. So chapter one's got two parts, chapter four's got three parts here. So always assume you're gonna do each of those parts with the chapter. Now, the study guides are relatively self-explanatory, but the way I want you to use these, the way I recommend using them, is I want you to think of them as like a self-test. Now, you've got copies in your course pack, and you can then come back online and get a digital copy and start fresh. So don't, don't hesitate to print off as many as what you need. But the idea is, think of these as a way to test yourself over the information, as opposed to just memorize only the answers to these questions, right? So the way I want you to use it is, go over the information, you know, spend the time, and then when you're ready to start studying, come back to these and see how many of them you can answer based on what you've learned so far in your, in your preparation. And, and, you know, without a doubt, you're not gonna be able to answer every single one the very first time, so what I would challenge you to do, though, is see how many of them you can answer, how well you can answer them. And then for those that you really struggle with or that you don't know, go back into the information and spend a little bit more time on those. What some people will do, and I think it, it's going to not be the most efficient, it's not going to be the best way to study. Um, it, what they'll do is they'll just write all the answers out, and then they'll just sort of, when they study, they'll just sort of look at those answers, and they're just sort of, scanning the sheet once they've got the answers filled out. And while that will work on some questions, you know, you get the easy multiple choice type questions, and those are gonna be, those types of questions are gonna be easier anyway. You'll be more likely to get those just by having scanned the sheet. But when it comes to questions where I reword the question, which I will do, I combine different concepts from different questions together, in order to really get all those correct, you really need to know the material on a, on a slightly more in-depth level. So by testing yourself and forcing your answers to come from memory as opposed to just looking at them on the paper, it's really gonna, you're really going to find out how much you really know here and whether you're really just sort of memorizing answers as you see them here or whether you actually have the context of the answer, whether you can actually recite the answer to, no matter how I ask the question. Not, I'm not trying to trick everybody necessarily, but just recognize that some of these questions are going to be easy, some of them are going to be moderate, some of them are going to be difficult. And on those difficult questions, you're going to have to know it a little better than just memorizing the answers as you see here. So study guides are there to sort of break things down, give you something to fall back on, but at the same time, it, it, use them to the, to, the, to the best of your advantage. Think of it as a, as a blank test where all the questions are short answer and ask yourself, can I answer all of these as if it were a very difficult short answer test? And if you can answer all of these from memory, short answer, or even the majority, then you're probably going to do really good on the quiz because the quiz is going to be easier. So that's how I would look at it. It's going to be more time consuming without, without a doubt, but that, that's really the ideal way to use that. Think of it like a test. Okay, so resources are going to help you prepare 
The other thing that you're going to have to do for the class is you've got two types of online assignments. Now, these are mostly supplemental to the class, meaning I'm not going to test you over everything in the online section, but you'll have to do it as part of that online part of your grade, the 10% of your grade. Now, some of these are just interesting articles, and then some of these are textbook review, which help you go in depth into the textbook, which helps sort of supplement what we're talking about in the lecture. So this is how I use the textbook. I have you read the textbook, do the textbook review, and then I have you do an article each week, which is sort of related to microbiology in a variety of different interesting topics. So to do these, you're going to go to coursework. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So if you come back to the home page, <clears throat> excuse me, if you come back to the home page, go to coursework. <clears throat> Let me change this to the student view. So let's see. Now I've been playing around here a little bit, so it's going to be a little different. And I hate to do it like that. Uh, but up here in the top, it'll say do next. And for those of you, unless you've done these already, you'll see the how gut bacteria help make us fat and thin that should be at the top and then the chapter one textbook should be right below that because I've been playing around here it's gonna look a little different but whatever's due next should show up here at the top and what you'll do so if this is the the this is one of the articles right here how gut bacteria help make us fat and thin click on that and by default let me pull up another one here real quick okay I had submitted this in my previous video that got uh, trashed, so I had to reset it here. When you first click on it, it's going to look a little different. It'll show a, down, a link to the article. Once you've clicked on it, and you, if you come back to it, just click on the instruction link here, and then that link will be right here for you. So the title will match the link. So you click the link there, and it's going to bring you to the article. Should be should be easy to find. It shouldn't be a big problem. The article is, is usually just, you know, three to six pages, give or take, depending on the font size and all that. They're not extremely long. And the idea is simple. You read the article. You come back here. And it'll rather than saying retake or anything like that, it'll say start the article. So you'll click the blue link down here. It'll say start the, art, start the assignment. And all it is is a series of questions that, that are over that article. So you read the article, you answer the questions. It's pretty straightforward. The, the, the questions will be in chronological order, so you don't have to hunt and search around. And uh, so you answer, excuse me, answer the questions. You can save progress if you start and you don't have time to finish for whatever reason. You can save progress and come back. But once you've, um, you've answered the questions, you'll come down here and click Submit. And then it should grade it and give you a grade right there. All right. Now, if you don't see a grade there, some of these assignments have short answer, fill in the blank questions, and it will kick it back to me to hand grade it if you don't get the short answer questions correct. So it, it's so the way I have it formatted. So basically, if you don't see a grade, it says something like pending or something like that. That means that you missed a uh, fill in the blank, and it's waiting on me to grade it. Okay. If you really want to know, ask me. I'll, I'll, I'll grade it and show you the grade. Otherwise, I try to check those about once a week and get those grades reposted for you. So, Otherwise, you should see a grade there. All right, so that's the, the online article. Look back here. One of the two online assignments is your article. You got one per week. Now, I don't just open them all at once, so they, they automatically open and close each week. And the online articles... Go ahead and show you this here. The online articles will open on Monday morning and close Sunday night. So you basically got from Monday to Sunday to do the online articles. They're not that time consuming. You just you can't forget and you just gotta put that time in there and, and find a good time to do those. Again, I won't test you over those, so you don't have to you don't have to go in depth with these to try and memorize everything or, or try to retain it for the test. The, the only thing, you will get some bonus questions on your exam that come from the articles. But they're pretty easy questions. They're sort of big picture, what was the article about type questions. So you will get some bonus questions, but they're bonus and they're broad, not real specific. So they ask, sort of ask, did you recall the main theme of the article uh, in the question? Otherwise, that's it. 
So the other type of online assignment is referred to as the chapter textbook reviews. So for whatever chapter we're on that week, you'll have a chapter textbook that's due the night before that test in class, test or quiz. So let's go back here. So the articles are always due on Sunday, but for your class, which meets on Tuesday, the textbook review will be due Monday night. And that's just to give you a little bit of extra time to to have those open the night before the, exam, the, the, the quiz or the exam. Okay, so uh, the other thing about these is these open by unit. So they don't they open in sections. So unit one, which is our first four chapters, they're all open right now. So chapters one, four, five, and six, and you can complete all of those right now. So you can turn them all in today and have them done. But they uh, but they close based upon what chapter and what what quiz we're doing that week or what chapter we're working on. So right now we're working on chapter one. Chapter one quiz is next Tuesday. That means the chapter one assignment will close Monday night. All right, so that's the way these work. But otherwise, the chapter review <clears throat> are pretty much the same idea. So if you look at one of these, you read the chapter out of your textbook, and you answer questions just like you would do with your article. Pretty straightforward. They're in chronological order. You don't have to hunt around. You should be able to read these as you go through the chapter. These are, there are more questions here. These will take you a longer amount of time. Here's a fill in the blank here. So uh, make sure that you set out some time for these. What I would recommend is, is as soon as you can, go ahead and just sit down and try and do, even if it's just a couple questions, even if it's just one question, read the first couple pages, answer the first couple questions for chapter one, and just see how long it takes you. Because everybody's going to spend a different amount of time. Some people can fly through these. Some people are slower readers and it takes them a longer time. So I would go ahead and challenge yourself to see how long it's going to take you about, and that gives you a better idea of how much time you can give yourself. All right. Now, once again, you can save progress. With these, the other thing about these is you can do multiple retakes on these. Okay. Uh, I give you up to three retakes on these. So on this one, I've submitted it twice. Uh, but you can do an, up to three total attempts. So I want everybody to get to get 100% on these, right? So if you don't like the grade on the first time, you missed a couple, go back and retake it. You do have to answer all the questions again. doesn't just let you pick the ones you missed, but you can take it up to three times um, up until it closes. So, if, so what you'll do is just hit the retake. And uh, if you don't like the grade the second time, you can take it a third time. After the third time, you, you have to accept that grade, um, and it will take um, the highest the highest attempt that you did. So if you get lower on the third attempt, it should take your highest one. Uh, when you're if you if your very first one is good, you like the score you got, you don't want to retake it, you can go ahead and click this link here, which will officially submit that, and then you can't go back and retake it. If you take it once and you forget to go back and take it again. When the due date closes, it'll take whatever you've got and automatically submit it for you. So you don't have to worry about clicking this. If you've got it, just let the due date expire and it'll submit it for you. So you can take these up to three times. <clears throat> okay, so that is the online part of it. Textbook review and the online, online articles found in the coursework section. So once again, articles Monday to Sunday, textbook review, open in units, and close the night before each quiz. So I mentioned this, but let me make it clear. I do not test you over the articles. I don't also I also don't test you over the textbook review. Now the textbook will correlate to some degree with each chapter. Some chapters correlate much more than other chapters, to be honest with you. But the idea of the textbook review is to get you to read the textbook, give you some points for doing it but without making all of that extra study material for each quiz and each exam. You've already got quite a bit to study. There's already a lot to do. So I don't want the textbook review to become that much more you have to memorize or study for each quiz and each exam. So the textbook review and the online articles are to supplement, but they won't be part of the weekly quizzes and the exams or even the final for that matter. Okay. I will give you bonus questions on the articles on the exams. 
but no points missed if you don't get them right. And they're broad questions. You know, what was the main theme of this article? What was the major takeaway as opposed to like really specific parts of the, of the article? All right, so <clears throat> um, the online stuff is really just effort-based points. If you put the effort in, you're doing them, you're getting them turned in on time, you know, for the most part, you should get 100% or near it on, on each of those. And the same is largely true of participation. So another 10% of your grade is participation. I give you six points a week, and part of that is just for showing up. Now, for my hybrid classes like you're in, you also get points for the group discussion, which is part of your review. Uh, but for the most part, you know, um, they're just there to, those points are there to help you. So if you're in class each week, once again, for the most part, you should get 100%. So if you never miss a class, you, you're doing the group discussion, you're not late, then you should get 100% in participation. And if you got all the articles turned in on time and you're doing the articles online, you should get darn near 100% on the online part of it as well. Okay? So 20% of your grade is largely just are you putting in the work are you making time for that part of the class uh, I realize it's time but but it is um, you know relatively easy points in the grand scheme of things now on participation you, you have to be in class you also have to be on time to class and I've had a lot of problems over the years it goes back and forth with people being late and um, one of the things I've decided to do is just start locking the door when class starts or shortly thereafter. I'm not going to necessarily lock it at the second the moment it hits the 4 o'clock, but uh, within the, the first couple minutes of class, I intend to start locking the doors. And it's not to penalize people, and I honestly hate doing that. I really do. I understand people sometimes are just running late. And, you know, I might give you a couple minutes before I do that, but I want people to be on time. I want people to not look at 4 o'clock, as a window of time between 4 and 4.15, which you can get there. Because what it does is, is it disrupts everybody when you're coming in late, and it makes it hard for people to pay attention. It just, it just sort of creates a, um, um, an incongruency with the, with, with the flow of the class. And it's in, in, um, so I'm, I'm really trying to, to tighten up on the, on the tardiness, okay? So if you're late and you come to class and the door is locked, I don't want you to knock on the door because that defeats the whole purpose of not disrupting the class, because that's going to be disruptive. So if you come and the door's locked, then that means you were too late. What that means is I want you to sit out in the hallway or find a nice, comfortable place there. I will typically take a break in the class about halfway through. I'll let everybody go to the bathroom, stretch, walk outside, whatever they want to do for about five minutes, and then we come back in. During the break, you're welcome to come in at that point, all right? And what I'll do is change your participation from unexcused to tardy. Okay, so if you're not there, you get an unexcused absence. If you're late, uh, we'll change it to tardy. All right, so you can still get some of the points, and uh, in that way, we don't have a bunch of disruptions, disturbances with people coming in late. Okay, I understand it happens. You, stuff comes up, and it's not something that you can always help. So my goal is not to penalize people as much as it is to try to keep the class under a more consistent um, a consistent flow. It's, it can be real disruptive, people coming in late. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. Now, on the unexcused absences, I pretty much mark all absences as unexcused. That doesn't mean that I don't believe you. So if you're, if you're sick and then I put the, the in the grade book as unexcused, that doesn't mean I don't believe you. It just, I put everything in as unexcused. So the only exceptions are if you work something out with me well in advance, if you come and talk to me and say, hey, you know, six weeks from now, I got this thing going on, I will sometimes mark those as excuse. But for the most part, the excuse absences are for nursing or surge tech or, or any college-related event that you might have to be. So if you have and it's something that you have to do on, on, for the college and it's going to be happening during class time, if you can verify that, I will make it an excused absence. Otherwise, pretty much everything goes into the unexcused category. For most people, it's never a problem. Most people don't miss a single class, and if they do miss, it's usually just one. So for most of you, this is not going to be a huge issue. Most people are not late. It's, it's usually only a small percent of people, but, but it's something that can be a disruption for everybody else. On a, when it comes to missing class, the good news is obviously you can make up the content outside of class. 
Uh, you can also do that with the quizzes and the exam. So we have the TLC, it's the Teaching and Learning Center. It's the area in the, as you walk in the main doors, you got the the, um, the couches and the, the um, excuse me, the fireplace and the computers. That's the, that's the Teaching and Learning Center, the great big area there. We do uh, test proctoring in addition to all the other stuff there. So if you're going to miss class, what you need to do is email me, contact me, let me know that you're going to be gone, ideally in advance. If not, if it's last minute, that's fine. Just let me know. And I will take the whatever you missed that day, and I will take it down to the TLC, get you a form filled out, and you can then come to, cl come to the TLC anytime before that next week's class and get that made up on the TLC hours. That TLC is open, by the way, from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. So as long as you can accommodate their hours, then we can get you made up and you will get that done before next week and there should be no problems. I don't allow much more than a week unless there's a really extreme situation. Come talk to me on a personal level. I'll be more than happy, happy to work with you, but unless there's an extreme situation, you got one week and I don't want to draw it out because I'm going to hand back everything within one, one week. I'll always have your quizzes and exams graded by the next week we come back. And so I don't want to draw that out. I don't want to hold everybody else up because one person didn't get theirs finished. So I have a hard deadline of one week, unless there's a really serious situation that's an exception. Uh, everybody's got one week to make things up. Now, penalties, I try not to penalize you. If you just miss one thing, I'm not going to penalize you. If you start missing multiple things and it's kind of a recurring theme, you start to get, you potentially get penalties, 10% um, up to 20% at most. And it's not so much to penalize you as it is to sort of encourage you to do the right thing, not, a, not encourage you to take extra time every week on the on getting those quizzes done. Last part here, we'll wrap this up. Contact, uh, email is preferred. I always try to get back with you within 24 hours, Monday through Friday on the weekends. I will sometimes check emails, but for the most part, I will wait and come get back to you on Monday. So if you, get, if you email me after Friday at five, I'll, I'll typically get back with you on Monday. Other methods, you're welcome to call. You can leave a message with the front office. Sometimes that's easier. You're right there, and you just want to drop a note off up at the front office. They'll get it to me. Or you can always stop by my office. My office number is 315. Stop by anytime. Sometimes I'm in the lab. Come by the lab if I'm not in my office, and you can talk to me anytime during my office hours. Uh, one more time here. I've got my email, office phone number, and my office hours over here on the right. All right, one last thing for next week. <clears throat> what you need to do is review chapter one. So that's parts one and two. So that includes the video, the lecture guide, and the study guide. All right, come prepared for the quiz. Number two online assignments. You've got the article and you've got the textbook review. All right, so get those done. Come to class ready to go. Again, we'll do the review at the beginning of class. You get a chance to ask questions and then we'll take the quiz at the end of class. Please, please, please email me if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy. I'll get back with you as soon as I can. And if, if especially if you feel like you need to know before next week, but I'll also answer questions in class next week as well. Check back here shortly for my lab. I'll do a quick video on lab. It won't take me nearly as long, and I'll get you caught up there as well. I'll see you all next week, and I look forward to meeting you for the first time. Have a great night.